all around the globe, scientists are coming together to show their support and show how important they think science is to society. Uh, and I think uh, anything that can draw more attention to science and to its role in ultimately protecting the planet and us is good. Everyone's gathered and ready for the start now. There's a few drops of rain falling, but no one's going to let that dampen their spirits. We're all here to celebrate science. Is everyone ready? Yeah! I think they're ready. <laughs> After two stints as minister at South Place, speaking engagements around the world as far away as Tasmania, and a life that came into direct contact with so much of history it almost defies belief, Conway retires to Paris at the start of the 1900s. Whilst living and writing there, he meets this man. Now, despite appearances, it's not someone that's just opened a new, artisanal, gluten-free bakery in Hoxton, but instead is Theodore Spicer Simpson. Hi, my name's Ginny. I'm a science writer and presenter, and my favourite topic to talk about is brains. My superhero's superpower is that she can see brain waves. So all the time, whenever you're doing anything, whether it's thinking or even sleeping or moving, your brain is emitting energy in the form of brain waves. And most of the time we can only see this if we rig you up with special headset um, and use an EEG machine and then you can see the waves. But my superhero's power is that she can see them all the time and even manipulate them to make people change their behaviour. Welcome to Bright Club, the thinking person's variety night. We're here at the Portland Arms in Cambridge to see researchers and academics take to the stage alongside the professionals to see if they can make us laugh with their research. It's really hard to imagine how you could have less consciousness because yeah. for humans it is a binary thing we're either conscious or we're exactly. unconscious because we're asleep I think that's what leads humans astray do you have any female role models in stem subjects <laughs> not really, really not no. really and do you think that's a problem how do you think we can help to inspire small children to be able to see themselves as scientists and and kind of really understand what it is that scientists do because it's such a range of different careers, it's quite difficult to get that across. Well, I think small children are, in a sense, natural experimental scientists. We've come to the Laboratory of Molecular Imaging now and I've had to change into these very fashionable scrubs and hairnet to make sure that I don't bring any outside pathogens into the lab. Thomas, what exactly is it you do here? It looks very exciting. It is pretty incredible to think that so much work and research has gone into something we all take for granted. And thinking to the future, it'll be really interesting to see how some of these amazing techniques can help us solve some of the huge problems that we're facing in the world today.